All right, everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be covering what's called the trim window. There are some previous episodes I covered on uh, basic assembly. Right now, I'm uh, in the assembly layout, uh, which I showed a few episodes back. If you want to get kind of caught up on that, that's the basic editing, getting your edit down into your timeline. In this episode, we're going to be going over kind of fine-tuning the, the timeline uh, via the trim window. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to change my view here by just going to regular editing. I'm going to click on editing and have it go to the editing layout. And now I'm going to start fine-tuning something some of the things in here. I'm going to grab my playhead here. I'm going to drag it back and kind of play through this edit here. This is one of the edits that needs to be changed. Fair to partly cloudy, Viola. Thanks. Sorry that I never... So right here we got where this guy starts walking over toward her, and there's supposed to be a longer pause as he takes a little bit more time to approach her there, and this edit was done a, a little too tight here. So we want a little bit of a pause because she has kind of a reaction, visual reaction, and then response. So I want to, uh, I want to increase some space between these edits here. Now the way we're going to be doing that is by using some uh, by by using the ripple tool. The ripple and the roll tools are two things that we're going to be using in the trim window. Uh, I showed those in earlier episodes and showed how to use those off of the toolbar. Uh, we're going to show you how to use those two tools, the roll tool and the ripple tool, out of the trim window. First of all, what I need to do to change this edit is I need to land on that edit. And the way you do that, right now I'm in my timeline. You can see the highlight blue here. I'm going to use my arrows up and down. Watch what happens when I hit arrow up. It jumps to the edit to the left. If you keep hitting up, it keeps jumping left until you hit the, the beginning of the timeline here. If you hit the arrow down, it jumps the uh, to the edits to the right. So uh, your down key goes to the right, your up key goes to the left. So I'm going to get on the edit that I want to change right there, and I've landed on this edit. With the trim window, you want to be able to land right on the edit so it knows what it's editing. Now I'm going to hit Shift T. Shift T will open up your trim window, and what it does here is it has uh, two frames. And notice it has selected both my edits right here. If you look really closely here, it's uh, selected the edit to the left and to the right, uh, so it's got both edits selected here. Now this is the out point of the clip to the left, and this is the in point frame of the clip to the right, so it's showing a visual reference of, of the edit here. Now what we've got is if we move our mouse, I'm going to tilde over this window. It's the, the tilde key is above the tab key, that little squiggly, uh, to, that little squiggly key. I'm going to hit that, and it makes this window go full frame, so I can kind of see what I've got here. Now I'm going to move my mouse right between this uh, line between here, and what it does is it brings up a roll edit icon, and if I move it to the left, it brings uh, this it changes it to this little yellow arrow to the left, which is a ripple edit, and it's going to ripple edit the clip to the left. And if I move it over here to the right, it does a ripple edit to the right instead of to the left. So roll tool, ripple to the left, ripple to the right. And what the roll tool does is it changes both the out point of this clip and the end point of this clip simultaneously. If I grab this and drag it to the left and I let go, look what just happened. I just shifted that over and I've got these, this new out point and end point. But it moves one clip while compensating with the other, so it affects both clips at the same time. I'm going to undo that, Control Z or Command Z on a Mac. And now I'm going to move up here and move my mouse a little to the left. And I'm going to grab this clip and drag it to the left. And what I just did is I shrunk that clip's out point, but it left this clip's in point the same and it compensated by pulling everything over to compensate for the missing frames there now. And notice it has this little yellow line which shows that the out point is selected. You can see that up here that this clip is selected, this one is not right now unless I choose your roll tool. Now they're both selected, both edit points are selected. I'm going to undo that. If I move over here to the right and click, notice it's selected just the end point of this clip to the right. But now I can clip and drag, expand the end point, let go, and it just expanded that clip's in point while leaving this clip's out point the same. So that is a ripple edit as well. So you've got access to the ripple edits and the roll edits uh, here in this trim window. So say I want to expand that. Let, let's, let's look at the end of this out point right here. I'm just going to edit this clip's out point right here. And uh, I'm going to move this to the left. And he finishes his line. And he starts to move there. So right there he just starts to move. I want to kind of get that on the same point here. So what I'm going to do is move my mouse over to this window, click, and I'm going to drag this backwards, adding a little bit more time. And I'm going to get it right to the end of that exact same line. So right there it says, thanks for asking. The line's a little bit different from uh, take to take, but I've got it, uh, but I got it right on the end of his line. And over here I'm going to get it right on the end of his line as well right there. So he just finished his line, finished his line. So now we notice we've got a little bit more space here. So with the trim window, I've been able to get that space. So I've been able to expand the space. Of, I've been able to expand this clip's end point and get a little bit more pause in there before he actually, before she actually says her next line. Let's play through that now. Fair to partly cloudy, Viola. Thanks. Sorry that I didn't. And there's a little bit more time in between there. So I like that. She 
takes a second to think about it. But now what I want to do, now they've got these kind of matched up, I want to use my roll edit to change the timing of my video edit. And I'm going to leave the audio the same. So I'm going to click, I'm going to lock my audio track down here. I'm going to arrow up to land on that edit. Shift T to bring open my trim window. Uh, let me tilt it over this to so make it bigger. And I'm going to grab this, uh, my roll edit. I'm going to roll this back. And right now it's just changing the video, not the audio. And I'm going to find a point to do the edit here. And go right there because I got I got this nice little dolly shot as our actress walks forward to the uh, to the drink station there and uh, and I want to show that so let's see what we got here notice it just moved the video back I did a roll edit there not a ripple edit so it doesn't uh, move things out of sync and um, and my audio is right here and what we've got is what's called an L cut an L cut notice that his, this audio from this clip extends over into this um, this clip's video and then it cuts to this clip's audio here. So let's see what we get as a visual here. I've been boxed with some random dude for the last 10 years. Hey, fair to partly cloudy, Viola, thanks. Sorry that I never got up to... And that worked out pretty well there because the um, because the bottle here actually and her head kind of blocked his, his face as he was saying the rest of the line so the audio didn't have to really necessarily match. So watch that again. For the last 10 years... Hey, fair to partly cloudy, Viola, thanks. Sorry that I never got up to see you. I meant to. I really did. And there we go. Okay, a couple of little other things that the trim window does here. It also does uh, what's called dynamic trimming. Actually, let's jump to my trim window. I'm going to get this back to where it was before. And I'm going to land on that edit. I'm going to hit shift T to go to my trim window. And let's talk about what these other little items do here. What you've got here, this is kind of rarely used. This actually applies a default transition. It'll apply a dissolve if that's what you've got right on that edit. So if you click on that, it just adds a dissolve between those two. So I hardly ever use well, that. Thanks. And it's kind of weird in that scene anyway. So undo that. But these other items right here, what you've got are these little numbers. You've got minus five, minus one, plus one, and plus five. And what this does is it will trim for you backwards one frame at a time or five frames at a time, or it will trim forward one frame at a time or five frames at a time by hitting these numbers. But I hardly ever use that because you can use your shortcuts. If you move your mouse over, it shows what, you need, what your shortcut is. On a PC, it is control plus left key. And over here is control shift plus left, your left arrow. And on a Mac, it's command. Instead of a control, you'll do command as a replacement. So to the right, control right, control shift right does five frames at a time. Right now we are in roll edit mode. So it's going to change the clips, this clip's out point and this clip's in point. At the same time, you notice everything is selected. It's got that blue line going around both frames. So now if I do my shortcuts here and I hold down control with both windows selected here, and if they're not both selected, if say this one is selected here or that one is selected there, but you want both of them to perform your roll edit, you just click in the middle and now they're both selected. You'd hold down control, arrow left, and notice you got a minus one here. It's got minus one frame back. And if I keep doing that, minus two, three, four, or five, and it's doing a roll edit, changing this clip's out point and this clip's in point simultaneously. If you do control shift, arrow left, it does five frames. You'll notice it's jumping five frames at a time. And if I go the opposite direction, control shift forward five frames at a time or control forward arrow right, it'll go one frame at a time. And this also works for your ripple edit. If you move over here and you select just this clip right there, now that one's selected, it will not affect this clip and the, and the shortcuts are the same. Control right goes one frame at a time. It's trimming this clip's in point while leaving the out point here alone. So it's doing a ripple edit or control left does the same and the same with control shift left and right. We'll do five frames at a time instead of one frame at a time for either this clip's out point or this clip's in point uh, for ripple editing. Then if you click right there in the middle, it does it for roll editing and that is called uh, dynamic trimming. And I want to show one other type of dynamic trimming, and it's more what I would call on-the-fly dynamic trimming. And uh, you're using this with your J, K, and L keys. If you remember J, K, and L, J is rewind, K is stop, L is forward. And uh, your spacebar is pause and play. But when you're in the trim window, spacebar is no longer pause and play. It's a little bit different. It's actually what's called it's actually what's called a play around. Uh, play around means it's going to play through or play around your edit. It goes to the, it goes about four seconds before and it plays through your edit. If you do a little trim here, let me just do a quick little, uh, like right there, we want to expand this a little bit. Let me do a little expansion on my endpoint there. There we go, added a little bit of space there. And now I hit space bar. Fair to partly cloudy, Viola, thanks. Sorry. 
and it will do that play around and it will just keep looping it so you can kind of see uh, your edit and, and make sure that it, it was timed properly. And that's what your spacebar does while you're in the trim window. It's no longer a play and pause, it is a play through uh, while you're in the trim window. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to show you what the JKL keys do now. Uh, right now, I'm going to select both of these clips here. I'm going to select the, in, the out point and this in point. And now, if you hit J, and then K to stop, notice it trimmed that. It did a roll edit on the fly. It, as I played it and I hit K, it changed it, uh, it changed it to the frame when I hit the letter K. I'm going to undo that. Um, and let's try that forward. So L. Sorry that I never got up to see you. I meant to. K to stop and notice, look what it did here. It did a roll edit, added this clip's out point and trimmed this clip's in point at the same time. And it did that on the fly. I want to undo that and say I want to do an expansion right here. Remember, we want a little bit more space. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this clip to the right. This will do it also on uh, ripple editing. I clip this clip to the right here. And now notice it's got that in point selected to the right. I hit J to rewind to add some timing to this. K to stop. It added a little bit of his dialogue, but look what it did. It added that, and if I want to time that a little bit differently, let's say I want to get rid of a little bit of line here, I'm going to hit L to the right. Thanks for asking. K to stop, and right when his line was done, I hit K to stop right on the fly, and I've got that extra space added there. So, um, and the reason why uh, they, they've added this feature, the JKL feature to the trim window, is uh, this is not for like fine tuning edits as much as it's for uh, doing these intuitive edits. It's ones that are kind of based on tuition, how long you should have a pause for. You're sitting there watching it live as you hit the letter K, it stops and performs the edit, is very, very helpful. Uh, and like I said, I, I call it an intuitive edit because you're, you're just kind of feeling where the edit happens as you're watching it instead of like trimming frame by frame. Anyway, so that's a very, very handy tool, very, very powerful tool within Premiere Pro. Use it all the time, especially with editing dialogue. Uh, if you have any questions, please post it and thanks for watching.